Okay, so we're continuing on with chapter four and looking at zero and negative exponents. So let's look at some of our definitions. So in general term, we're gonna be letting a, which is our variable, be a non-zero number. And then we're gonna let n be an integer. So let me show you how we're gonna apply that. So we're gonna be looking at both words, how that's translated to algebra, and how that has an example, because I think most of us just like to look at the examples, but I'm gonna give you a little bit of background. So let's look at this. A to the zero power is one. So we've saw this in 4.1, where we took 10 to the zero power, that's equal one. So if we just did any non-zero number, which this A represents, to the power of zero, that's gonna equal one. So here's your specific example. Five to the zero power equals one. And we wanna look back at that pattern that we generated in 4.1 when we made the columns of the powers of two, the powers of three, the powers of 10. And that'll help us recognize that five to the zero power does equal one. Our pattern's not gonna change midway through. So, 5 to the 0 equals 1, just like 11 to the 0 power is 1, 1 million to the 0 power is going to be 1. Our next definition, the way we read this is a to the negative n is the reciprocal of a to the n. So notice that this is the negative n, its reciprocal would be a positive n. So here's how we would look at this in the algebra way. So again, the way I'm gonna look at, read this is a to the negative n is equal to one over a to the n. So let's look at this example and that'll help us kind of make it a little bit more concrete. So two to the negative three is equal to one over or one divided by two to the three. So what Mr. Slack likes to think of is this place, if it's negative, it's not happy where it is. So it wants to move. The only place it can move is down, okay? And then notice that my exponent now is positive. So let's look at the reverse of that. The way I read this is a to the n power is the reciprocal of a to the negative n. Now I know you're probably like, eh, this isn't quite getting making sense, but let's just, we'll go over it again. And I think the more examples you look at, the more you'll be able to see um, how we're manipulating the numbers. So again, here's your algebra way. So it's a to the n power, where a is any non-zero number, and n is an integer. So a to the n is equal to one over a to the negative n. So if we were to look at this and say, okay, well, he's not happy where he is right here, it's a negative exponent. So the only place to move it is back up here. And I need to get back to this. So here's your example. Two to the fifth power, if I was to move it, to another place, right now it's kind of happy. So if I was to move it down, okay, and make it one over two, it would make it to the negative fifth, okay? And so again, we'll just keep practicing this and I think you'll see that basically what we're doing is we're either moving it down or we're moving it back up. And I put this picture over here for um, that says growth is because when we deal with exponents, a lot of it has to do with science and when we deal with bacteria growth and viruses and um, we call it exponential growth. So let's take a look at some examples. So seven to the zero power, all right, anything to the zero is gonna be one. We like those. Six to the negative two. So again, it's not happy where it is, so it wants to move. The only place it can move is down. So I'm, so I'm gonna make it one over six 
to the second power. And I can simplify that and put it 1 over 6 squared is not 12. Remember a square? It's like side by side, time side, time side. So 6 times 6 is 36. Uh, and this one's a tricky one. So you, you have a couple of options the way you, you um, can look at this one. So the first thing I'm going to do is just apply the negative exponent to each number. So it's going to be 1 to the negative 3 over 2 to the negative 3. Okay, so these people, you can think about the numbers as people if you want, whatever helps, aren't happy where they are. So they want to move. You need to move them. And the only place you can move them is one's going to go down or they could go back up. So if I was to move this one down, he's going to be happy. It's going to be 1 to the third power. And if I was to move this guy up, he would be happy. So it's going to be 2 to the third power. Okay. Now, 2 to the third. Remember, this is an exponent. It's an executive. It's up in the high um, office building. So it's 2 times 2 times 2, which gives us 8. Okay. And 1 to the third, again, it's that third is our executive, so or the 3 is our executive. So it's 1 times 1 times 1. And then 8 divided by 1 is just 8. Okay, so first of all, calm down. I don't want you to write this all down unless you really, really want to. Um, so breathe and read the problem with me. Here we go. A half-life is the amount of time that it takes for a radioactive substance to decay to one half of its original quantity. Okay, so suppose the radioactive decay causes 400 grams of a substance. I don't know what it is, but it's radioactive and we are having it decrease to 400 times 2 to the negative 3 grams after three half-lives. Okay, so I'm applying three half-lives to it. So I want to evaluate what this is going to be to determine how many grams of the substance is going to be left. So again, calm down. You don't have to write all this if you don't want to. Just write this down. Okay. So the way I would look at this is 400 times means multiplication. Okay. Now this, again, I'm going to put that into the fraction if we were to go back and look at the definitions. Okay. 2 to the negative 3. It's not happy where it is. So it's going to be moved. So it's going to be 1 over 2 to the third power. Okay. And remember, when you multiply a whole number by a fraction, you can make this look like a fraction if you want, and then you just multiply straight across. So it's going to be 400 divided by 2 to the third power. Now remember, 2 to the third power is not 6. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. So 400 divided by 8 is 5, 0, 50. So I would have 50 grams left after the three half-lives. Okay. So again, calm down. Don't have to write it all down. But um, there's kind of a lot in this problem. Um, and it's a real-world application, which I know you all like to see. So the way I'm going to do this first is I'm, it's not happy where it is, so I'm going to move it. So I'm going to make it 1 over negative 2 to the third power. Because as soon as I move it, the exponent now is going to be positive. So this is going to be 1 over, and it's going to have negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. So here we go. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Positive 4 times negative 2 is a negative 8. Okay. So you could put, most people would put their, 
that negative sign off to the side and make it negative one eighth. Okay, and so you're kind of pulling that negative off to the side. But the way I would read this is negative two to the negative three power is negative one eighth. This is the same as one over four times four times four. Four times four is 16. 16 times four, four times six is 24 and gives me 64, 164. Okay, so this is the same as our original expression. Okay, when I substitute it in with positive four. Okay, so let's take a look at this one where I have three to the negative x. And again, I'm gonna plug in the positive four. So it's gonna be three to the negative four. So this is going to be 3, negative, you can think about this as negative 1 times a positive 4 is going to be a negative 4. Okay. It's not happy where it is, so it needs to move. The only place I can move this to make this a positive exponent is to the move it down. So it's going to be 1 over 3 to the 4th power. And 3 to the 4th power, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is going to be 1 over 81. Okay, so just kind of sit with some of it for a little bit. Um, again, we're going to be practicing in class, and um, I think you'll get it. So let's take a look at how we can simplify the algebraic expression. So simplifying meaning that we're going to make it as small as possible. So I like this one because it's negative 2 times n to the 0. Now, doesn't matter what I put in for n. If I put in 5, doesn't matter because anything to the 0 power is going to be 1. So it's going to be negative 2 times 1, which is just going to be negative 2. You're like, sweet. That one's pretty easy. Let's take a look at this one. So I'm simplifying it. So I want to make it not have a negative exponent if, it, um, if it's possible. So again, this is 8 times x to the negative 3. So I'm going to leave the 8 where it is. He's happy. And x to the negative 3 is not happy. So the only way to make this exponent positive is to flip it to the bottom. So it's going to be times 1 over x to the third power. Okay. And again, when you multiply a whole number by a fraction, you can put this over one if that helps you. Eight times one is eight over x to the third. Okay, so notice it, this problem is only asking you to simplify it, to make it look smaller if possible. It's not asking you to evaluate. If it was, it would say simplify and evaluate the expression, and then you could just plug it. All right, let's take a look at this last one. Here we go. 9 divided by n to the negative 3. Now, again, all you're doing is simplifying. And so your goal is to get rid of that negative exponent. So the only place I can move this to make it a positive is up. Okay, so this is going to stay 9. The 9 is not going to move anywhere. 9 times n to the positive 3. And then I'm just going to rewrite that as 9n to the third power. All right. So, um, again, come back and look at these examples. See how we change the exponents to make them positive. And I think you're going to do great.